an appeal to the people by a man once ousted by the people. Ahmed Shafiq, who was Mubarak's last serving prime minister, held a media conference in Cairo after state TV confirmed what was widely known, that he'll join the Muslim Brotherhood's candidate in the second round of the presidential elections. I invite you to sign a deal with them. We are not in this race for the sake of authority, but to serve the people. Despite many Egyptians viewing Shafiq as an enemy to the revolution which toppled the former president, Shafiq himself insists he is the only man capable of protecting the revolution. I extend my hand to all Egyptians. I accept dialogue with all politicians from all parties. At the same time, I insist on aligning myself with the people. The Muslim Brotherhood, whose candidate Mohamed Morsi topped the poll in the first round, has also been striking a conciliatory tone, hoping to win support from the revolutionary parties in what's becoming an increasingly polarized country. I think the election is going really well. We had observers here, Jimmy Carter and others, so they obviously went well. But we just need the Supreme Council to stop getting involved in this election. We had a revolution because we want a change. I don't even know why Ahmed Shafiq is running. I honestly don't. Egyptians have to vote for Mohamed Morsi. We can't have Shafiq as a president. We were hoping for a better result. Shafiq and Morsi are pretty much the same as far as I'm concerned. What has Shafiq done to this country? People keep saying he built the airport, that he did his job. He did what any official must do. It's his duty. But as the political horse trading gathers pace, a third candidate, socialist Hamdin Sabahi, who appears to have missed out on the runoff, is now disputing the preliminary results. He wants the courts to investigate irregularities, including vote rigging and bribery. Political maneuvering in the run up to the next round of voting is crucial. Egyptian voters are polarized like never before, with the choice between a Muslim Brotherhood dominated government or a candidate who once described Mubarak as his inspiration. If one of these two candidates fails to secure a broad coalition, then the winner of the next round could very well be the person who Egyptians dislike the least. Jamal al-Shayyal, Al-Jazeera, Cairo.